What's going on? Came across an article about Yellow. Came out August 30th, 2023. From a source called Financial Review. Um, and it pretty much talks about Yellow and Teamsters. And give us outsiders an inside look on how they ended up in this situation. Um, it talks about how Yellow... And all of their acquisitions, um, how they were slow to basically put their plan together um, as the debts mounted. And that pretty much was the reason for their collapse. Um, it's a three part article. It's not that long, um, but it starts off um, talking about well, the title of the first article says why Yellow Corpse Collapse makes a good MBA case study. MBA as in uh, Mary Boy Adam. Um, and the article starts off with something that uh, there's an executive that um, talks about days leading up to the strike. It says the union announced its intention to walk out with the date set for Monday, July 24th. And knowing the market as I do, this is the executive talking. He says, I didn't see the company surviving a work stoppage, Sullivan says. I downloaded my contacts, removed any personal data from my company laptop, and updated my resume. So he was ready to go. Once he saw, he saw the writing on the wall and decided to take action. Um, it goes on to say as the clients panicked about the risk of deliveries not being made, yellow freight volumes fell 80% within a week of the strike threat, according to Jack Atkins at financial services firm Stevens. With 22,000 of yellow 30,000 person workforce unionized, the company was disadvantaged compared to the non-union carriers of the top five less than truckload freight carriers, which specialize in smaller loads, all but yellow are non-unionized. The strike was averted, but the reputational damage has been done on social and mainstream media two weeks after the union threat. Yellow declared bankruptcy and all 30,000 workers found themselves without a job. The bankruptcy, one of the largest this year after Silicon Valley Bank and Bed Bath & Beyond stemmed partly from one of a growing number of industrial disputes across America. These covered everyone from pilots and rail, railway workers to Hollywood actors and writers, coal miners, Amazon sort hand, sorting hands, and baristas at Starbucks. There have been 240 industrial disputes in the past eight months, according to Cornell Labor Action Tracker. Almost as many as the first full year of the Biden's administration. So they, they want to put a political spin on it, but... Um, so, so my question is this, if you guys, and this is to the yellow drivers that might be listening, in hindsight, was it really a good idea to go on strike? Um, if you can go back and do it all over again, would you just hold out and not strike and just kind of deal with it or would you or are you okay with how things happen like in other words just needed to happen uh, i'm just kind of curious about that um because and i and i'm curious because like right now in trucking trucking is, is a lot of things going on um i mean the freight volumes are bad the rates are bad uh yellow is not the only company that when that went under 
a lot of the big companies are reorganizing. Um, and uh, a lot of owner operators are getting out of the business because they can't afford to, to be in it anymore. Some are just barely holding on. Others getting their trucks repoed or they they just selling. So uh, it's pretty bad right now. I'm also curious to know for the company drivers for the LTL companies, what are things like there? Right now, I'm not an LTL. So um, I don't know what's going on. Are you guys working a lot of hours uh, due to this yellow uh, uh, demise? Did that increase you guys' um, workload? Are you still getting the gang of overtime? Uh, are, you know, did it, did, did it not really affect you in a positive way? Did, uh, is it still slow out there for you? Are you only working a couple of days um, so that everyone else could get some work and make some money? Like what's going on in LTL? So I, I noticed I don't see a whole lot of LTL uh, trucks on the road no more. That's kind of that's kind of worrying me. It's bothering me a little bit. I passed by one of my old terminals, and um, this was like a couple weeks ago, and um, I noticed that. Uh, see, I passed by there around ten thirty, eleven o'clock in the morning, and the yard was full of trucks, and they are normally gone. And so I was wondering, like, wow. Now, I know at that particular terminal, they kind of do things a little bit different. <laughs> so I don't know what kind of plan the dispatch and management had, you know, starting everybody a little bit later. But it, it appears like it appeared that it's not many drivers. It wasn't many drivers out there on the road. So I just want to know, leave in the comments what's going on. Uh, how's everything uh, going on your neck of the woods? All right. All right. Second part of this article. Uh, it says undisciplined and expensive. Exp uh, let me read that again. <laughs> undisciplined and expensive expansion. Such is the level of activity that commentators are calling it the summer of strikes. But it's too easy to blame the unions. Yellow is also a case study in undisciplined and expensive expansion and what happens to overstretched companies when interest rates rise and unexpected crisis hit the international brotherhood of teamsters formed 120 years ago by horse team drivers and now with 1.3 members across different industries blame yellow bankruptcy on two decades of executive mismanagement a series of acquisitions, including of trucking companies, Roadway in 2003 for $1.1 billion and USF for $1.47 billion, and then it has in parentheses $2.3 billion, in 2005, had left Yellow heavily indebted and vulnerable when recession hit in 2008. The aim was to get economies of scale and benefits from cost synergies, but the company failed to integrate the business properly. In 2009, when the cost of debt skyrocketed, Yellow teetered for a while on the brink of bankruptcy. A last minute debt for equity deal heavily diluted shareholders equity while unions accepted wage concessions and freezes on pension payments in return for a stake in the company and board seats. In 2011, Yellow started to sell businesses and cut costs. And in 2014, it struck another debt for equity deal after negotiating with the unions. But it hardly, but it, but it had already started to suffer from poor industry rating for delivery, which left it unable to charge enough to cover operating costs. It also struggled to find good staff. 
In its annual reports, Yellow warned that difficulties attracting and retaining qualified drivers could result in increase in driver compensation. In 2019, Yellow negotiated a new deal with the Teamsters involving an 18% pay increase over five years in exchange for support for a structure a structural overhaul that included shutting down redundant service centers, the introduction of part-time workers, and greater flexibility around employee tasks. That deal also gave confidence to private equity firm Apollo Global Management to lead a $700 million loan faci facility to Yellow in 2019. Like most private equity deals, though, the loan included a high rate of interest, LIBOR, L-I-B-O-R. It looks like that this is a mnemonic. It, it has a meaning, but I don't know what it is, but it's L-I-B-O-R. LIBOR plus 750 base points. I don't know if that's a uh, code for, for the stock market or what. I don't know. Anyway, however, the reset was barely underway when COVID-19 pand pandemic hit the following year. Yellow sought and qualified for $700 million loan from a $700 million loan from the federal government in 2020. As part of COVID-19 rescue package, Congress rolled out to support firms critical to national security. Yellow services were deemed essential to defense operations. Management then deferred a payment to its workers' pension fund, promising it would pay with interest as soon as the plan was approved. It was also insisted that the completed, let me start over, it also insisted that it completed the restructuring plan it started in 2019, affected about half of the company's depots. All right. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that part of it, that's the third, I'm sorry, that's the second um, article that's just pretty much talking about uh, the involvement of the union and, and giving us a little bit more information as to what, you know, what transpired. Um, I'll go on and read the, the last part. Almost over. Fighting for workers is a full contact sport. The union, however, then refused to approve the company's expanded restructuring plan, saying this would erode its bargaining power. In June, Yellow sued the union for blocking the restructuring plan, which it said was essential to the company's survival. In a July 12th letter, CEO Darren Hawkins pleaded with the Teamsters promising that the company would raise pay by $11 an hour over five years if the union agreed to proceed with the final phase of the restructuring, but the union rejected it again. As a result of the union's intransigence, yellow business plan has been frozen. The company has lost market share and has been unable to secure additional lending for day-to-day -day business operation. Hawkins and Chairman, uh, okay, that was Hawkins and Chairman Matt Dooney. He wrote that, that, that last little part. It goes on to say, workers such as Sullivan, who was with Yellow Corp for 37 years, blame the union for overplaying his hand. The corporation's position was that the current labor contract, which didn't expire until April 2024, allowed them to make consolidation changes until that contract was a point of contention. But the new leadership at the Teamsters Union took exception to those changes, he said. He claims the new president, Sean O'Brien, was a lot less conciliatory than his predecessor, O'Brien. According to an estimate from the Anderson Economic Group, 
published by Reuters, a 10 day strike by Teamster members on freight operator UPS with which the union had only just negotiated a new deal would have cost the U.S. economy seven billion dollars. While clients wanted to avoid the risks with yellow, resistance to the consolidation plan also meant Apollo and other lenders pulled out, selling the debt to a hedge fund Citadel. Yellow's former chief executive, George Powell III, who ran the company into the mid-1990s, noted in a letter to the Wall Street Journal, Journal that maintaining a healthy balance between growth, profitability, and debt was an approach that benefited customers, employees, and shareholders for 42 years. Teamsters leadership drove a wedge between these constituencies, Powell said. There have already been more than 400 bankruptcies this year in America, the highest at this point in the year since 2010. For Sullivan, yellow bankruptcy means he now has to do something he hasn't done for a while. It's been literally decades since I had to look for a job. And that's the end of the article. So what are your thoughts? My, it, it is my thoughts. Just like I've felt like, I felt like this uh, back in 2009, uh, 2008, 2009, when they was talking about going bankrupt the first time. Everything, all those consolidations is what put them in a situation. It all goes back to that. And this article, I like how it mentioned that their their slow pro- process or their slow progress to integrate whatever game plan they had, that's if they had a game plan, um, contributed to the demise because, you know, th- they were in a position where they was trying to corner the market by acquiring all these other large carriers. Uh, it's no reason why they should be in this situation. They should be like top dog industry still to this day. And, you know, it just goes to show how, you know, greed can um, can really take people down. But as far as the Teamsters go, um, I mean, I don't really have nothing negative to say about that. Um, I just wonder how do they feel about things at this point if they can all over again if they can go back maybe two months ago will they still strike um personally i don't you know i don't think it was a good move in hindsight mainly because of you know the current market and how everything is right now i mean there was no way for them to make they already wasn't the company was already not making no money So, um, and then there's not enough freight out there. So to not go to work, you know, it, it, it it wasn't going to help at all. It was just going to make things worse. And I saw the videos of, of the company trying to explain that, but I guess from what it appears, cause I don't know, you know, the Teamsters, Heard that song and dance before they made concessions and they like, no, we're not doing it this time, you know. Um, and so unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you feel about it, uh, things are where they are right now. So what do you think? And again, these just my opinions. You know, so. Uh, comment down below, like and subscribe.